Hi, my name is Jason Nash, and in this video we're going to walk through a simple port mirroring configuration on the new uh, vSphere 5 Virtual Distributed Switch. So right here I've got my lab. It's a pretty simple configuration. Three hosts, uh, some VMs, things like that. And what we're going to do is just do some port mirroring between my vCenter VM here, vCenter 5, and a test system that I've set up here called VueXP. And simply I'm using these two because I've rolled those over to the distributed switch and I haven't got around to doing the other ones yet but they'll do for now. So to configure this you need to figure out what you want to mirror and where you want to mirror it to. So the virtual distributed switch gives you a couple of options. Basically you can mirror from a virtual port ID to another virtual port ID or a physical uplink. And so when we do this in a second I'll show you where we can choose uplinks, where we choose port IDs, but the first step is figuring out where you're coming from and where you're going to. And since I'm going to go from a VM to a VM I need to see what my two port IDs are. So when you go through and configure this, you don't select the VM, you select the distributed port ID. So to do that, we go to Inventory Networking, choose your DVS, mine is just called Nash Corp DVS, and go look at the Ports tab. So when you bring up the Ports tab, if it's, it's in a large order here, and it grabs port IDs uh, just kind of randomly, so you may be up and down, so I've, I've uh, sorted these by connection status. And so I want to go from vCenter 5, which is port ID 100, to VueXP1, port ID 10. So I'm going to go from 100 to 10. So to set up this mirroring session, we right click on the main switch and choose Edit Settings. Go over to the Port Mirroring tab, and we want to create a new session. There's no sessions created yet, so we'll go ahead and do an Add. And first we give it a name. So I'll do a Demo Test Mirror session and you can give a description mirror port 100 to port 10 simple as that we've also got some options so if you want uh, normal IO operations to still continue on the destination port you want to check this box and I do want that to happen because I'm going to RDP into the view machine over the same port we're using as a traffic destination so I don't want traffic to stop but if you have dedicated NICs you may you know just use them for mirroring destination you can also encapsulate the mirrored traffic in a VLAN so you check the box, you choose which VLAN, and you can tell it to preserve the original VLAN in the encapsulation. I don't need to do that. I uh, probably need to do this if you're going to send this out a physical uplink and you're going to pass it through a network. I'm not going to do that, so it's unneeded. You can also change the packet size or MTU size for the mirrored traffic. Again, you check the box, select your size, and it will fragment it as needed. And I don't need to do that either. So we click Next and now we we specify our source so the first thing is which kind of traffic flows do you want do you want ingress egress or both I'm gonna go ahead and do both and then what's your source port ID well we just looked it up my source port ID is 100 so I type those in and hit enter if I had others like 200 I could just go ahead and add those you can do multiples so you can do multiple source to a single destination or even multiple destinations I'm just gonna do one click next and now we choose our destination or our target so here we've got two options we have port like I'm going to do port 10 and hit enter and you can also choose an uplink now you'll notice that the uplinks are just the uplink names for your DVS so when you create your DVS you can rename the default names I've left them default here but there's not a host so it's not like if the VM's floating around your cluster, you can say, I want all traffic to be redirected out host 4's DV uplink number 3. It's going to do it on the machine the VM's sitting on. So if you want to capture this out physical, you kind of need to dedicate a physical NIC on each host and be prepared to monitor that traffic. I'm not going to do that today, but it, it's an option here that you can do. So we click Next gives you your configuration again, number of sources, number of destinations, one and one. And I'm going to go ahead and enable this port mirroring session. So you can create these sessions and leave them disabled. That way if you need to come back later and, and enable them, you can without having to run it through configuration every time. So I'll hit finish. Now you'll see when you highlight one, it'll give you, you know, your status, your description again, allow all your settings and your source and destinations. So we hit OK. That'll take effect. You'll see it reconfigure the DV switch down here at the bottom, and you're now ready to go. So what I've done is, is I have uh, 
RDP'd into another system, uh, View XP1 here. I've already loaded Wireshark. Wireshark's a very popular free open source uh, packet analyzer. It's very good. And what I'm doing is I've already preset a filter. And I've basically said anything you see IP address to or from .32, 192, 168, 232, which is my lab subnet uh, display. So dot .32 is actually the uh, system I'm working on here, my iMac. Uh, everything you're viewing is in a Fusion VM. But what you're going to see is I'm going to ping it and do some things and do some things to the vCenter server, and you're going to see that, that traffic mirrored to the system here. So let's go up to Capture, say Start, and we'll start seeing some traffic come across. So that's me doing ICMP ping from my uh, wind, or I'm sorry, my iMac to the vCenter uh, from .32 to .203. You don't see an echo reply because I've got the firewall turned on on the vCenter box. Uh, if that was not on, you would see echo replies. So the VUXP box here is not in this traffic stream. I'm going from my iMac to my vCenter VM and that traffic is then being mirrored over to the VUXP port which is getting picked up by Wireshark. So it's really easy to set this up. Uh, configuration is simple. You can enable and disable them as you need. Uh, also, one thing some people have asked me, if you go look at, say, the port group that these two machines are in and look at security, you know, I don't turn on promiscuous mode or anything like that, so you don't have to change any of the default settings. It just works if you enable the sessions. So hopefully that helps you out. It's a great new feature in the DVS, uh, something that people have been waiting on for a while, and uh, there you go.